Amplifiers are perhaps the most pervasive of analog electronic devices. They're present in your transmitters, in your receivers, in your microphones, pretty much all the sensors available out there and anywhere where there is a signal of interest. Now, amplification is one of the fundamental aspects of what electronic devices are. Now, for the first electronic devices made of vacuum tubes saw a huge explosion in popularity because they made long-range telecommunications possible for the first time. And they owed their popularity due to their amplification. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about amplifiers. And more specifically, we're gonna talk about very commonly available ICs called operational amplifiers. Okay, most at a fundamental level, what is amplification? Okay, if you have any input, V of T, the output should be some constant A times V of T. A here is what we call the amplification factor. Right? Now, the relationship between the input and output should be the same no matter what the frequency content of V of T is. Now, if you go back to your basic electrical circuits, there is one very simple circuit you saw which actually does this. It's called the voltage divider. Right? If you have two resistances in series, then the voltage across one of them will be proportional to the value of that resistance, right? So does that mean this actually is giving us amplification? No, the constant factor at the output is always less than one in a voltage divider. Now, that actually using just electrical circuits, it is actually impossible to actually get a power amplification. So in order to get, actually get a power amplification, we have to go to electronic devices. In order to get a gain of a gain constant greater than one, we are going to use some very commonly available ICs called op amps, and we're going to use that to make any gain we want. Okay, let's talk about operational amplifiers. At the most fundamental level, an op amp is what is called a difference amplifier. That means it has two inputs, V1 and V2, and a single output which is A times V2 minus V1, okay? Now, an ideal op-amp has an infinite gain. That means A is equal to infinity. Now, you might be wondering, what would an infinite gain amplifier do, possibly do? Because wouldn't it corrupt all the signals to infinity? And more importantly, how would you get an infinite gain? Is it really in practically possible? Okay. So let's put the practicality aside for now and just talk theoretically. Now, if you do have an infinite gain, what we will see is you can use negative feedback to get whatever gain you need. Okay, let's consider this diagram here. Okay, so here I'm taking the output, multiplying it by some another constant h, and then I'm feeding that to the negative input. Okay, now you can see the output is given by this formula in terms of your input voltages, okay? Now let's look at this expression. We can simplify this to get this, all right? Now this is in terms of A. As you can see, A appears both in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, go back to your calculus now. If you do limit A tends to infinity, what happens to this expression? This becomes one over H. That means if H is less than one, one over H is greater than one. So we can use a gain which is less than one to get any gain we want if we have an amplifier whose gain is infinite. Now we've already seen in our basic electrical circuits how to get a gain less than one using a voltage divider. And that's precisely what we will do. Okay, let's convert this diagram into something which looks like an electrical circuit. Let's replace the box which says the amplifier with the op amp symbol, which is just a triangle. Okay, now consider this feedback, which is going through H, and H is less than one. So we know we can do that using a voltage divider. So re let's replace the feedback with a voltage divider. Okay, now the input is at the other terminal. So let's apply the input V2 at the positive terminal. Okay, now what is H in this diagram? It's R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay, now let's replace this into our pre previous formula we got for our diagram. And we see 
that the gain of this amplifier is 1 plus R2 over R1. So by adjusting the values of R2 or R1, we can get any gain we want. We have just made our first operational amplifier or first amplifier with a positive gain. Okay, let's look at the circuit a bit more closely. Now, the resistors R1 and R2 really form a voltage divider only if the current going into the negative pin is zero, right? Okay, now, when would that be the case that the current going into a box of which is an electrical circuit zero? If the impedance looking in is infinite, then the current going in is zero, okay? So can we just require our operational amplifiers to have infinite input impedance? Now let's step back and think about is that a good thing to have? If you have an amplifier and you're connecting a sensor to it, now think about your sensors, let's say a microphone. Now in general, all the power which the micro microphone gets is from the sound waves, from the air pressure. So you know it does not really have a lot of power to provide you. Right? So in general, your amplifiers should not draw any current from your sensors because the sensors don't have power. Therefore, if you do have an infinite input impedance, that means your amplifier will not draw any current. So it's actually a good thing. All right. So let's throw that into the properties of our ideal op amp. Let's say the input impedance at both the positive and the negative pins is infinite. So the current going into both the pins is zero. And therefore, we have, we actually have a voltage divider and the formula still applies. Okay, let's look at another important property of an operational amplifier. Now we said the output VO is given as A times V2 minus V1. And in this case, if V2 is finite, we know VO will also be finite because it's just a constant times V2 or V2, okay? Now, now let's think about this. So VO is finite, A is infinite, and what should V2 minus V1 be as limit A tends to infinity? Turns out V2 minus V1 should be zero if A is infinite, right? Now this is a very important property of an op amp. That is, there is always a virtual shot between V2 and V1 or the negative pin and the positive pin. Now, I say it's a virtual shot because the potentials at the inverting and the non-inverting pins are always equal, but there is no actual current flowing through them. So they behave as if there's a shot between them, but there's actually no such a thing as a shot. Now let's put back all the properties of an ideal op amp which we saw. First, it has an infinite gain. Two, it has infinite input impedance. That means the current going into the inverting and non-inverting pins is zero. And three, there is a virtual shot between the in inverting pin and the non-inverting pin. That means the potentials at the inverting and non-inverting pins are always equal.